the advent of the electric car in the automotive landscape, it's fair to say, has its critics. You see, the, the hardline traditionalists will tell us that they lack the oral stimulation, that they are just appliances, they have no soul. For that, I would say, maybe it's time we start to think a little bit outside the box. You see, too much invigoration can dull some of our other senses. What if we were to remove something like the engine? If we were to remove that mechanical thrashing away from it, then maybe our other senses would be heightened to what's going on around us. Imagine the joy of threading an open top sports car down a lovely mountain hilltop road with no engine noise to dull the other senses. We'd be able to enjoy what's going on around us a little bit more. And that's what electric cars can provide us with. So to say, yeah, maybe in this case, less really is more. Perhaps then what we need is more cars like the Polestar 02, an all electric two plus two roadster. Welcome to another edition of Sneak Peaks. Welcome to the Polestar 02 roadster concept. And as always, welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> Now, before we crack on with this week's edition of Sneak Peeks, it is, of course, that time where I ask you to make sure you're subscribed to the Auto EV channel. And once you've done that, if you can press the little bell button down below, that way you'll receive notification of when our next video goes live. Once you've watched the video, if you do like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure to leave us some comments as well, good or bad. Let us know how we're doing. Now, before we get too excited about this, it is just a concept car. It's Polestar's second concept, and I'll talk a little bit more about its first in just a second. The problem with concepts is most manufacturers that show them, it's a sort of flight of fancy. It's a sort of, it's an idea of what they could do if they were allowed off the leash. Very few of them actually make production. Certain elements of styling do, of course. I mean, if you old enough to remember the 1980s and um, the MG EXE concept. Younger viewers may need to Google this. If you look at the tail lamps, they pretty much made it unchanged to the MGF, but that was it. That's all that car ever really showed. But some do, and I'm looking at things like the Porsche Taycan, which was of course the Mission E concept at first, but then became the Taycan as we know it. Polestar. They showed the Precept as their first concept and we're about to see that take shape and production form as the new Polestar 5. And having seen the prototype up close, trust me when I say this, it is pretty much the concept that we all saw a couple of years ago. Now, I'm not suggesting that the O2 is going to become a production reality, but a huge amount of what's on this car is certainly Polestar laying down a statement of intent from design point of view, from sustainability and from construction. So it is an important car and that's why we're featuring it here today. Now when Polestar first showed their hand with the Polestar 2, it was easy to see the family resemblance to the siblings Volvo. But that's no bad thing because the design of Volvo these days is a much more elegant, better looking car than the, some of the crass designs that we're seeing from some of the German brands such as BMW, Audi and Mercedes. But with a new product coming from Polestar, we're seeing them develop their own design language. And we saw that with the Precept, and it goes one stage further with the O2. There's still a resemblance there, but it's still more, dare I suggest, distant cousin than outright sibling. Now, there's the familiar Thor Hammer headlights at the front, but they are now split to give a much more distinctive face to the Polestar. And We've seen this on the preset before and we're going to see it on actual road going cars from Polestar as we move forward. This is them developing their own design language. It's a very sharp, almost kind of Ferrari-esque, Lotus-esque kind of front end to the O2 Roadster. Real minimalist overhangs at front and rear and a reasonably long wheelbase, which is good because that provides ample space in the 2 plus 2 cabin. Now, we're going to talk about construction a little bit later on as well, but it is based on the platform that the Polestar 5 is going to have. And this is important because one of the things that EVs allow designers to do is have a bit more of a free reign because, of course, there's no engine that you have to package. There's no real cooling for that engine needed. So they are allowed to have a little bit more of a free reign and let the designs run a bit more, well, free 
As you move back, you can see this lovely low kind of bonnet line that just hugs this wheel arch over the, over the front wheels here and this very strong shoulder line that comes up here. There's two real distinct lines on the O2 that I absolutely love. The first one is this one here that comes up and it just pinches the bodywork in and takes away some of the sort of visual bulk from the side. And then this last one here, the second one that kind of just runs to the back of the car, allowing a much more kind of muscular, more elegant sort of look to it. It is a phenomenal looking car and as I say, whilst it's not slated for production, a lot of the design language in this we're going to see transferred into Polestars from now on. And I think that's a good thing. And at the rear, you've got Polestars signature light bar, but even more simplified on the concept roadster here. And at the bottom, you've got the, the diffuser. Again, a real simplistic sort of diffuser design. And between the two of them, the, sort of the frame, the width of the car, it's very clean, it's very minimalist. You'll also notice there's no extraneous kind of spoilers or pop-up aerodynamics. And that's because it's all been done via ducts and airflow through certain parts of the car that's come from the aerospace industry. It's as cool, crisp and clean as a Pogan Paul kitchen or a Bang Olufsen sound system. And it's a real statement of intent where Polestar are going. Now we're not going to discuss practicality like we normally do at this stage of a sneak peek because, well, it's a concept car, there's no point in discussing the practicality. So let's talk about construction because what the O2 has is nothing that we're not already seeing before. And that's quite interesting. It's not some flight of fancy, it's using technology that is available today and Polestar are about to showcase with the Polestar 5 when it comes out. Now, as I say, it's based on the platform of that car, which is to say it's a bonded aluminium structure. And we've seen that before with people like Lotus and Aston Martin using that in the road cars. And it's where Polestar are also going as well. Now, the reason for using a bonded aluminium structure it's quite simple. It provides very light, but very rigid platform in which to base a car. And for a sports car, that's important because although this car isn't able to be driven, if it were, Polestar say, it would offer a very dynamic type of drive, very, very linear type of steering with very minimal body roll in it. And the whole thing, as I say, is very safe because you've got that bonded aluminium structure. And of course, Polestar, sister brand to Volvo, safety is hugely important. Again, you've got a lovely big safety tub for your occupants. Now, we're seeing the car here as an open top car, but the concept does actually have a two-piece folding hard top as well, which is odd because a lot of manufacturers are now moving away from that. But of course, lightweight construction and the way it's packaged and modern technology means that when it is in place, it's very lightweight, it carries on the design of the car, but of course when it's then folded, it doesn't take up too much um, space and it doesn't carry a huge amount of weight either. So very, very clever technology we're seeing with this car. Now the two words that we can use when we're talking about the O2's interior is technology and sustainability. And let's deal with that last one first. Gone are things like wood and leather and any fancy type of um, materials that can't be recycled. What you've got here is an interior that is fully recyclable. In fact, so much so that the polyester, recycled polyester material that's used on the things like the seats and the doors um, all come from the same source. So in other words, when it comes to recycling, they can all be recycled together rather than lots of different materials having to go to different places to be recycled separately. It's Polestar's way, if you like, of becoming a carbon neutral company by 2030. And we're already seeing this sort of clean, sort of minimalist type of look in the road cars. But again, like the exterior and the construction, there's nothing in here that we haven't already seen before or we don't see on current production cars. You've got this very simple and very elegant two screen display, one in front of the driver and then this big central screen on the, um, in the center here to control all the sort of systems of the car. There's nothing extraneous that you don't need in here. Now, as I say, thanks to that sort of long wheelbase, you've got this two plus two cabin layout. And obviously because of the lack of engine using just motors, that can be stretched out to make sure that it's quite a light and airy cabin inside. What you also have at the back, as I say, apart from, well, this one's obviously got the hard top um, down, but there is an area of negative cabin pressure, which is at the back here. Why do you need that? Well, for twofold, first of all, it creates a very sort of calming sense of interior when you're driving with the roof down. And also, it allows you to launch and land your drone. Yeah, 
your drone. Let's talk about the drone. Because what's missing here is the autonomous drone. Yes, a drone. Now what you can do is you can launch this drone from the car and it will follow you and it will film various different sequences. So you may want a sort of a more atmospheric one, say for instance, if you're driving along that lovely cliff top road where the drone will follow you and film you in your car. Or you can have a much more dynamic one for when you're driving down that kind of twisty mountain road. And then it will return to the rear deck of the car and play it through the central infotainment system. Silly? Yes. Fun? Most definitely. You may think it's unnecessary, but this is to showcase that, that how we're engaging with the cars now is slightly different, especially in this age of social media. And Polestar want to be ahead of the game when it comes to that. Yeah, a drone. Oh, why not? Now, there are no powertrain or battery or charging statistics to discuss about this car because it is pure and simply a design and construction exercise as we stand here. But given how close that it is to the upcoming Polestar 5 and sharing its platform, it's not too far of a stretch to the imagination to think that maybe, just maybe, we couldn't see something like this heading into a Polestar showroom over the next few years. As I say, it's certainly a statement of intent of where they want to go. And boy, is it a statement. So if they're not going to build it, why are we bothering showing it? Well, it's a statement of intent, as I said, from Polestar, that they are now their own masters. It may be just a concept car, but it does point towards a very, very bright future for the company. And as I said before in my opening statement, there are too many cynics out there who feel that electric cars are just dispassionate tools that have no more right than just to transport us from A to B. At Auto EV, and thankfully Polestar, we feel slightly different. But with that comes a greater responsibility. We know nowadays that sustainability is a key part of everyday life. And as I said before as well, when you lose one of your senses, then the others become much more heightened. Now we know that electric cars can be, and in some cases very much are, fun. But perhaps it's Polestar with this car that are showing us that we can attune those other senses into the thrill of responsible driving. Thank you once again for watching Auto EV. Please remember to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. And then once you do that, make sure you hit the little bell button down below because that way you'll receive notification of when our next video goes live. If you've liked what you've seen, then please remember to give us a bit of a thumbs up and maybe leave us some comments down below, good or bad, because as they say, every little bit helps. Remember, we're on all social media platforms as well. So things like Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So go and give us a follow there because, well, every little bit helps. And if this edition of Sneak Peeks has just had you, well, gasping for even more, then please remember to stay tuned to our YouTube channel because there you will see not just more edition of these Sneak Peek episodes, but our electric icon series and, of course, road test reviews of all the new and latest electric cars to hit the UK market. All that remains for me to say is thank you once again for taking the time to watch and support the channel. I'll see you again soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded.